The American eel is a highly adaptive catadromous fish that lives in fresh water in North America. They have the broadest diversity of habitats, ranging from as far south as Venezuela to as far north as Greenland. The eels start their life in the Sargasso Sea. They then spend the next 7 to 12 months riding the Gulf Stream, eventually ending up in estuaries. From there, as the eels metamorphose, they travel into freshwater streams, lakes, and reservoirs, where they will remain for most of their lives. What makes them uh, unique is, is the fact that they arrive as juveniles each spring to our shores uh, and then um, uh, migrate inland to become mature adults 5 to 15 years later. One of the habitats the eels find themselves in is here at Groton Utilities, located in Groton, Connecticut. So the way they end up here is, is just um, instinctual. Uh, so the juveniles that are coming in as glass eels uh, are looking for a source of fresh water, of course, because that's the habitat that they want to um, uh, migrate into. And so uh, the, the treatment plant here, the, 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 the public utility, uh, has a series of dams that ultimately lead into the reservoir behind me that, of course, has a spillway. Any excess water uh, that they're not sending through the plant will spill over the spillway. And so in the springtime, while that spillway is, is, is charged and spilling into Long Island Sound, it's going to draw eels into. Um, and, and eels are, are, um, are not strong swimmers, but they're incredibly strong migrants. And what I mean by that is they have, um, at small stages, the ability to actually climb vertically uh, on roughened surfaces like dams and spillways. As long as they're wet, uh, uh, chances are a juvenile American eel is going to be able to surmount, surmount that barrier. And so they don't know any better. Uh, they don't know that it's a dead-end street for them. Once the eels enter the reservoir system, they are essentially trapped. When they have matured, they will migrate back to the Sargasso Sea to spawn. However, since the spillway is not active during their migration period, there is no safe way out. But it's in those, those dry years um, that, that the uh, spillway isn't spilling, that the only way out is into the plant. Uh, eels are very sensitive to water flow. They, they need a, a path in or out of fresh water. And so they're very, very highly sensitized to water flow and velocity. So the eels affect our water treatment in, in a lot of different ways. They, they can get in, sometimes they get in and get all the way to our filters, and then they, and they, they actually bore into the, um, into the filter media. Uh, when, it, when they come into the plant, sometimes they get, they get sucked into our, or trapped into our, um, some of our analyzer sensing lines, in which blocks the flow of water, and we have to go in and we have to actually uh, take the, get the eels out of there. A collaboration between DEEP, Groton Utilities, and USGS resulted in the development of a device that intercepts the eels before they can enter the water treatment system. This device allows for the eels to be released further downstream, allowing safe access to the Atlantic Ocean via the Peconic River. I was at a fish passage conference this past spring uh, held up in Massachusetts, and I saw um, um, Dr. Alex Harrow someone who works out of the Conte Anadromous Fish Lab, at a conference where he was presenting the results of a new system of downstream bypass for reservoir systems, specifically designed to pass American eels, in a lot of cases away from turbines at hydroelectric facilities. Um, but I took it a step further and um, realized that the way, uh, the, the method that he was doing it uh, in which uh, he used an airlift, was very conservative with water. It didn't, you, you wouldn't lose any water. Then uh, alternate method, which would be to use a siphon over the spillway, um, uh, in which you, you, you certainly pass eels, but you also lose a lot of water. Uh, and water is money in this business. He, he tested this system in an experimental flume that he has at his disposal in Massachusetts. Uh, and has been looking to repeat that experiment in the field, and uh, it was a good fit, it was a good match. Well, we, we got some plans uh, from DEP, which were kind of vague as far as what they wanted, uh, what to build it out of, what, what would be the best way for it to work. And we kind of put our heads together here, and we decided that uh, we would use a PVC cage 
uh, wrapped in material which they supplied us, a kind of a netting type plastic material. Um, and kind of put the whole design together. Um, they, they dropped off a bunch of pipe and fittings and whatnot. We had to construct a way to mount that to the side channel to get the piping in place so that it would stay there, get the cage over top of it, get the airlines hooked up and figure out exactly how it was gonna work. Uh, initially, we started with compressors and a couple of tanks. Uh, we couldn't get the proper airflow. Uh, we ended up switching from a compressor system for air to a blower system from air. And basically, we've got a blower inside the building, an airline coming out. It injects the air into the bottom of the pipe and creates a, an air flow coming up, which attracts the eels. And then that blows them out the top and into the tray, which washes them into the basket. So the airflow is pretty critical. The trial for the trap system took place in fall of 2016, and the initial results are promising. On the surface, yeah, we're collecting eels. The fact that we only had three eels um, downstream of the trap in, in the filtration plant um, so far this year is a really good indication, uh, especially if you compare that with the 23 animals or eels that we got out of the trap. Um, and so the reason that it's working uh, is that it's providing, num well, number one, it's being fished in a, a, the right location. Uh, eels are drawn to the plant, and so it's being fished in proximity to that flow entering the plant. Uh, it's, it's the velocity through that bypass pipe, the airlift pipe, is greater than the velocity going into the plant. And so eels are looking for that higher velocity corridor and so they're drawn to the pipe. Uh, and the trap is retaining anything that uses it uses the pipe. And so, uh, yeah, I, th I think it's working well. I think um, uh, for, for uh, an exploratory study in the first year, I think we did a good job. In the future, the trap will undergo improvements. A tagging system may be implemented to discover an accurate percentage of eel retainment. Additional lighting may be installed which will help keep eels away from the treatment plant's intake piping. It is important to conserve the American eel because they are an important prey species for fish, aquatic mammals, and fish-eating birds. Through the teamwork of both DEEP and Groton Utilities, the American eel will find their way safely back to the Sargasso Sea.